Hey, how y'all doing? My name is Evan Simpson, and I am a sophomore, and my um, major is psychology. And today I'm going to be talking about the settlement of Iceland. So, um, let's get into it. So, it is believed that the settlement of Iceland began in the, uh, around the late 19th century by, um, Norse meaning, Norse meaning uh, North Germanic ethno-linguistic, um, when Norse settlers migrated across the North Atlantic due to the um, <clears throat> tyrannical ambitions of uh, King Harold I of Norway. However, scholars and um, historians believe that the motives of these settlers were ignited by the, uh, the shortage of uh, available land in Norway, as well as um, Scandinavia as a whole. Whatever the reason was for the um, Norse settlers uh, up and leaving, all historians agree that at some point in the late 9th century, Iceland had become a bedrock for these voyagers fleeing from Norway. So, um, let's see. There is some controversy out there against, or amongst historians, when it comes to the uh, carbon dating work uh, regarding the settlement of Iceland and um, some historians will suggest that Iceland had been settled as early as the 7th century by Gaelic monks, Gaelic meaning ethno-linguistic groups native to Ireland, uh, Scotland, and the Isle of Man in northwestern Europe. And um, these Gaelic monks were spotted by uh, the Norse settlers when they arrived in the 9th century. And it is believed that these monks were sent on a uh, Hiberno, Hiberno Scottish mission, which were attempts to um, spread Christianity in monasteries, and it was initiated by Irish uh, clerics. And um, along with the carbon dating, there was also archaeological, archae archaeological evidence. <laughs> as well to support this theory of a uh, monastic settlement of Iceland. Um, sediment deposits were discovered dating back prior to the arrival of the, uh, the Norse settlers, along with cave carvings of crosses that were identical to the Hiberno-Scottish style. Um, moving on to the, um, the actual settlement by the Norse settlers, Regarding the settlement of Iceland by Norse settlers, scholars and scribes, with the help of written sources as well, were able to trace the date when the settlement began back to 874 by Ingolfur Arneson. I'm probably butchering it, but um, Arneson is commonly recognized as the first Norse settler, settler to sail to Iceland with the intent to establish a, a, a civilization on it. Um, archaeological evidence can prove this date of, uh, of settlement as well as the, uh, vice, the, sorry, the vast migration and population across the landmass of Iceland. And that by the time around, by the time the 9th century rolled around, um, the entire country of Iceland, uh, had become occupied by Norse settlers. Um, historians have also been able to calculate using the archaeological evidence as well. Um, sorry, uh, the original number of Norse settlers that initially arrived to be at ballpark from 300 to 430 settlers. And they could also calculate the uh, population growth caused by migration patterns to Iceland. And that estimate pretty wide range from 4,300 to 24,000 migrants. Um, going back to um, Ingolfer Arnarsson, Arnarsson the, uh, the guy I was talking about earlier, um, although he is awarded with the title of the first Norse settler to intentionally establish a, uh, a settlement on Iceland, he was not the first Norse man to stumble upon it. Um, that title is held by a man by the name of N Nadod, maybe, um, maybe I'm getting that right, probably not, uh, Nadod the Viking. And this man, when he was on a sailing expedition uh, from Norway to the Faroe Islands, uh, his ship was blown off course until he reached the, uh, this unknown landmass. And um, Nadad explored the new land, searching for 
civilization, but found no sign of a, any human habitation. So, um, so he went on to establish his own settlement on the, uh, the east coast of Iceland, but within a year, he, um, he returned home to Norway. Um, however, before leaving, the dot gave this unknown land its first name, Snailand. Probably pronounce that Snailand or something. Um, which translates to a land of snow. So, pretty close to what the name of the country is now. But um, later on, a man named Garter the Swede soon followed after uh, the Dodd, as he too was blown off course uh, when he discovered this sizable landmass. So he wasn't intentionally looking for Iceland. He was blown off course as well. Um, sorry. Yeah, I found this landmass. Uh, Garter made the decision to circumnavigate, so circle the uh, the country as a whole, and um, he was able to confirm that it was indeed an island. And he soon established a a small settlement on the north side of the island, and he renamed this country Garter's Island. And uh, just like Nadad, Garter packed up and sailed home pretty soon after he arrived. But however, um, one of his crewmates. Um, Garter's crewmates decided to stay with a slave and a bondswoman, and um, those were the first confirmed permanent uh, residents of Iceland. And ending off with this last note, the um, the settlement and population expansion in Iceland was pretty rampant, and uh, because of this, there were some side effects that were detrimental to um, uh, the environment of Iceland. Um, Scientists present the argument that the rapid urbanization of Iceland by extensive uh, deforestation and overgrazing caused um, immense soil erosion, which caused the land to be less fertile for the um, inhabitants of Iceland. So that's everything I got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you think I left anything out, you can comment think you can comment on the video once I post it. Uh, take it easy and thanks for watching if you did.